वेलकम बैक आई होप यू आर एक्साइटेड टू गो थ्रू दिस नेक्स्ट सेशन विद मी इन दिस सेशन वी विल लर्न मोर अबाउट पाथ डिजाइन एंड ड्राफ्टिंग वी शैल लर्न सम न्यू फीचर्स इन कैटिया वी फाइव पाथ डिजाइन लाइक बुलियन ऑपरेशन वी विल ऑल्सो लर्न अबाउट क्रिएटिंग ड्रॉइंग व्यूज एंड डायमेंशनिंग अ सॉलिड मॉडल टूडे आई विल वॉक यू थ्रू डिजाइनिंग अ बुश होल्डर स्टेप बाई स्टेप एंड देन द ड्राफ्टिंग ऑफ दिस मॉडल बुश होल्डर हाउस इज वायर्स दैट कंडक्ट करंट they are typically used in electrical machines during this process we will be switching between sketcher workbench and path design workbench another new workbench that we will learn about in catia v5 is drafting let us first take a look at the input drawing you may come across an existing drawing to make a cad part in a few instances one is when you go for an interview and give a tool test Another is when you are working in a company on sustaining products and need to make changes to existing products while creating new designs you will not have access to any drawings the cad model has to be made from scratch in this drawing we can see the top view of the model section view of the bushes from the front another section view on the side and an isometric view we shall divide this model into four parts the base a bush 1 on the left of the top face then bush 2 on the right side of the top face and then the corner bushes let's open the catia software start a new part and name it bush holder and save it we have the geometrical set 1 here Note that we are going to follow a naming convention which can be seen on the specification tree as there are going to be multiple sketches and part bodies in this model. When you are working on a complex design, the CAD models are usually very large. So, naming convention is vital for easy communication among people in different departments and also to go back and make changes as required. Like we did in the previous sessions, I will start the design with creating a point and then a position sketch. I will select the XY plane for planar support reference field. Then I will select projection point from the drop down list for origin type. And then click on point 1 from the geometrical set in the specification tree for the origin reference field. Do you see that all the sketcher workbench commands showed up? Now I am going to change the name of the geometrical set 1 by right clicking and going to properties option. and then i will click on feature properties and update the name under feature name to base you can also use the shortcut key alt plus enter on your keyboard to go to properties of an entity in the specification tree as part of step 1 i will walk you through creating the base we shall create a rectangle arcs use trim operation pad fillet and shell commands if you look at the drawing in the top view there is a rectangular shape rounded on either side with arcs I will also make a mental note of the dimensions of the rectangle and the arc radius. Now, back in the Catia window, I shall use a centered rectangle command and draw a rectangle of length 200 mm and height 120 mm. The radius of the profile on either end of this rectangle is 100 mm. So, I will select the arc command from the profile toolbar like this. and draw an arc with the center of the rectangle as the center point of the arc now i can hover my mouse pointer on the vertical line of the rectangle to ensure that a tangent constraint is applied then i will click on the top line of the rectangle making sure that there is a coincident constraint between the arc and this line as seen i shall complete the arc command by clicking on the bottom line of the rectangle There is another coincident constraint formed automatically by Catia. If the constraints did not form automatically, you may activate the geometrical constraints option from the sketch tools toolbar. Or you can apply constraints using the constraints defined in dialog box command from the constraints toolbar. Next, we shall use the trim command from the operation toolbar to remove the unwanted edges. I'm selecting the edges I want to keep. and the connecting line gets trimmed off 
Let's do the same on the other side of the rectangle as well. I can double click on the trim command to keep it active until I finish all the trim operations. Now from the same toolbar, I will select the quick trim command and select the vertical line that is tangent to the arc. As you can see, the sketch is partially white, which means it is no longer fully constrained. The vertical line that we removed was part of geometrical constraint on the sketch. So, on removing this line, the tangency constraint is also removed. To avoid this, I will press Ctrl plus Z. However, since we do not need these vertical lines as part of the main sketch, I shall convert them to construction lines by selecting the construction or standard element command from the sketch tools toolbar and then selecting these vertical lines. In the drawing, we can see that the corners are curved. We could use the corner command from the operation toolbar to achieve this. But it is advised to do this operation at the part design or surfacing level. Having curved corners at the sketch level will sometimes make it difficult to add further additions to the sketch. Let's click on the exit sketcher to proceed further. Now, the software shows the part design workbench and the related commands. I will select the pad command from the sketch based features and apply 30mm length as seen from the drawing. I had to do a small calculation to obtain this value. From the section view AA, I can see that the whole height of the part body is 45mm. The base starts at 15mm from the top of the part, so I can subtract 15mm from 45mm to get the actual height of the base, that is 30mm. Back in the CATIA window, I will click on OK and exit the pad command window. Now I will use the edge fillet command to create round corners on this pad. Let's apply a radius of 18mm and select all four corners like so. Next, I will also apply fillet on the top face of this pad with a radius of 10mm. If we look at the section view in the drawing, it is evident that the base is 6mm thick from the outside, which calls for a shell command operation. So, let's click on the shell command from the dress up features toolbar and apply 6mm thickness by selecting the bottom face, the face that we did not apply the fillet to. At this point, let us also rename the part body as base in the specification tree. I can also click on Alt Enter and go to the Feature Properties tab and change the feature name. If we look at the drawing of the top view of the model, the next part we could work on is the bushes on the top surface of the base. So we will work on the smaller bush first and then go to the larger one. As practiced from our previous exercises in CATIA, it seems natural to start a sketch on the top plane of the base and add pads from there. I'm going to take a different approach for this design. I'm going to walk you through designing the bushes as separate bodies and then combine all of them with the base towards the end. This is a practice that is usually undertaken in the industry. The reason is, when there are changes and revisions to a specific part of the body, it would be easy to update those changes to just that body. On the contrary, if we build sketches and pads on top of the existing geometry, Making changes later on would be tedious as the geometry references are interlinked. For this next step, to create a body for the smaller bush, we shall use commands like axis, project 3D elements, offset, circle, pad and remove. So let's start off the sketch for the smaller bush. To do this, I will go to the insert menu bar, then click on the geometrical set and rename it to bush 1. Note that the father shows as bush holder in this window. Next, I will repeat the same steps to insert a new body and also rename it to Bush 1. Then, I will click on the OK button to exit this window. Next, I shall right click on the Bush 1 geometrical set and click on Define in Work Object. This action underlines Bush 1 and make sure that our next sketch is saved under this geometrical set. 
Now, I will select the position sketch and then select the top face of the base as shown for the planar support reference field and click on OK. First, I shall use the Project 3D Elements command from the Operation toolbar and select Sketch 1 from under the base geometrical set for the Elements to Project field. I will click on OK to come out of this command. Next, I shall draw some reference axis to obtain a certain point of the bush as per the dimensions shown in the drawing. To do this, I can select the axis command from the profile toolbar and draw a horizontal axis above the origin. Let's define the distance from the yellow horizontal axis to the axis as 15mm. Now, this axis is fully constrained. Next, using the same axis command, I will draw a vertical axis to the left of the pad as shown. Now, I shall constrain the distance between these two vertical axes as 120mm. I calculated this value from the drawing, 43 plus 17 plus 60. At the intersection of these two axes on the left side of the origin, we shall use the circle command to draw two concentric circles. Let's look at the drawing to deduce the circle dimensions. The diameter of the outer circle of the bush is 60mm and the diameter of the inner circle is 28mm as seen in the section view above. So, I will select the circle command from the profile toolbar and draw two circles as shown. I shall apply diameter dimensions of 60mm and 28mm each. Now, the bush 1 sketch is complete and is fully constrained. I shall click on Exit Sketcher command to come out of the sketch. Now, we are back in the Path Design Workbench. Let's create a pad for these circles. Before I begin, I will right-click on the gear icon beside bush 1 body in the specification tray. Then, I shall select the Define in Work Object option to activate this body. Any new features made will be added to this body. I will now select the pad command from sketch based features toolbar and then select the circle from the graphics area. Did you notice that the outline of the pad is also included for this new pad feature? This is not the desired profile of the bush. I need to change this projected edge of the base to a construction element. So, let's cancel this pad command. Now, I will double click on the sketch 2 from the graphics area to edit this sketch. I will hide the base body to be able to see the sketch clearly. I will click on the top face of the base and press the space bar to hide the base. Now, let's select the projected elements of the base and click on the construction or standard element icon from the sketch tools toolbar. Now, I shall exit the sketcher and then select the pad command again. Let's take a look at the drawing to see the dimensions for this bush. Currently, the sketch for the bush 1 is on the top plane of the base. As we can see from the drawing, both the bushes are extending 15mm above the base. Below the top plane, the bushes extend 26-15, that is 11mm. So, in the pad definition window, I can click on the More button to see more options. There is a first limit and then there is a second limit for the length value. If you look in the graphics area, the pad preview shows an upward arrow, orange in color. It means that the first limit is applied in the direction of this arrow. I shall type in 15 in the length field of first limit. Coming to the second limit, I shall type in 11mm in the length field as shown. In the preview, you can see that the pad has extended 11mm below the sketch profile. I can click on the OK button to exit the pad definition window. I see that the pads are in the hidden mode. I shall select each pad and click the space bar to show them in the graphics area. Let's verify the thickness of this pad by using the measure command. I will click on one end of the pad and then click on the other end of the pad. 
we can see that the normal length of this pad is 26 mm. Now in the drawing, you can see that the bottom of the bush 1 is 11 mm below the xy plane. Another way to create the pad for this bush is to create a plane parallel to and 11 mm from the xy plane. This way helps us in creating the second bush easily without making any calculations. To do this, I shall right click on bush 1 geometrical set and then click on the define in work object option. Now I will select the plane command from the reference elements toolbar. In the plane definition window, I will choose the plane type as offset from plane. For the reference field, I will select XY plane from the specification tree. And for the offset value, I will type in 11mm. Making sure the red coloured arrow is pointing downwards as seen on the screen, I will now click on OK. If the arrow is not pointing in the right direction, you can use the reverse direction option. A new plane is created now. Let's reference this plane in the sketch and pad that we created for bush 1. To do this, I will right click on the bush 1 geometrical set and click on the define in work object option. I shall then go to sketch 2 under bush 1 geometrical set. Next, I shall right click on sketch 2 and click on sketch 2 object. And then click on the change sketch support option. Sketch positioning definition window opens up. I will update the planar support reference field with the plane 1 that we just created. Now, I will click on the OK button and exit this window. At this point, we also need to edit the pad command definition as well. I will double click on the pad 2 under bush 1 and change the first limit length to 26mm. I will change the length value in the second limit to 0. Let us verify the length of this modified pad. It shows 26mm, which is correct. Bush 1 design is now completed. Moving forward, if we look at the section view in the drawing, there is another 5mm cut on top of Bush 1. To achieve this, let's insert a new body. I will now right click on Sketch 2 under Bush 1 geometrical set and click on Copy. Next, I will right click on Bush 1 geometrical set and then click on paste. A new sketch named sketch 3 is added to the bush 1 geometrical set. I will double click on this new sketch to edit it. I will delete one circle and dimension the other circle diameter as 35mm. So an existing sketch has been copied and pasted to be able to reuse the sketch. Next, I will exit the sketcher workbench. Now, I will make the bush one part body as my work object and start a pad command. Remember that this sketch is on plane 1. In the pad definition window, for the length value on the first limit, I will type 26mm. For the length value of the second limit, I will type minus 21mm. This way, a pad of thickness 5mm is created on top of the bush 1. As you can see, the cut on the top is still not seen in my solid part as it is overlapping with the bush 1. Katia has a toolbar called Boolean Operations which has operations like Add, Subtract, Intersect, Union Trim, Assemble and Remove Lump. When you are working with complex parts, Boolean Operations help reduce the rebuild time. Add, Subtract and Intersect are similar to mathematical Boolean Operations. With add boolean operation, we can add or combine two part bodies from the specification tree. Remove helps with subtracting one part body from another. Intersect command helps keep the intersecting area of the two selected bodies and remove the remaining part. We will use few of the boolean operations in this exercise. Now, coming back to the model, I will right click on body 3 under bush 1 part body. Then, click on body 3 object at the bottom and then click on the remove option. In the Remove Definition window, for the Remove field, Body 3 shows up by default as we are performing this operation on Body 3. For the From field, I will select Bush 1 part body and then click on OK to exit this window. Now, we can see that the step cut is formed on the Bush 1.